please don't believe the hype. Please don't. You know, I'm always going to keep it transparent, real, raw, relevant, all the good things. Mm -hmm. Two of the things that I had to address within myself was envy and um, jealousy. I can say that. Another thing, comparison. Another thing, coveting things that other, my other friends would have. I mean, I, I can be honest. Those are some things that I had to address because I actually was a part of a program where God just really seeded this ministry in me. Let me tell y'all something. I done found me a keeper. <laughs> I'm doing that. I want to be honest in that. I want to be honest in that. So, look, y'all, please don't believe the hype. Please don't. You know, I'm always going to keep it transparent, real, raw, relevant, all the good things about what happens in life. So, don't believe the hype that. Once you find that one thing that you're super passionate about, that you're always going to be motivated to do it because the truth is that you're not. Like I can be honest and say that being a life coach is the thing that I am passionate about doing it. And I would love to, do, I would even do it if I didn't get paid to do it. But since I want to be a full-time entrepreneur, I have to put some some price point on it. But I am passionate about it, but I'm not always motivated to show up in spaces, especially showing up and creating videos. I'm not always motivated. Like even in this moment right now, I'd rather not. I'd rather be watching TV and eating ice cream or, you know, out doing whatever. I'd rather be doing that. But instead you show up. Instead, you are con consistent in the thing that you're passionate about because your motivation is going to come or go. I'm just being honest with you. I'm just being honest with you. Your motivation is going to come and go. You are not always going to be passionate or or motivated to always do the thing that you're passionate about. That's the T. That's the T. And that's not even why we're here, but I want it to be transparent with you. I want to be vulnerable, vulnerable with you because this episode, this video is me being vulnerable but in the topic that we're going to talk about, which is friendships, I know I just did a video about things you should know about your friends. If you have not watched that video or listened to that podcast, you need to go back and do so because it's very insightful. But I want to share with you my present experience with friendships and the things that God is doing for me. The thing that God is doing for me. So let's talk for a minute. For a while, when I first gave my life to Christ and I literally started implementing his word in my life, I started to change. Like my taste started to change, my desires, the things I wanted to do, things I didn't want to do, all changed. Of course, because, you know, if you heard my testimony, I used to be into drinking, smoking, um, having sex with everybody, you know, just doing whatever I wanted to do that was going to appease my flesh, spending money frivolously, whatever, whatever I wanted to do. I was doing it. As long as my bills was paid, nails was done, I was good. <laughs> okay, I was good. And so as I committed my life to Christ, my desires shifted. And with that shift in my desires, my behaviors changed, my character changed, you know, and that caused people who were very close to me to fall off. And we can take it back even further than before me getting to know Christ, just as a teenager growing up in high school, having different friends and me having this one close friend who I felt was doing a little, doing little mischievous stuff behind my back. Um, not even just one, like multiple people. And so as I grew up and matured in life and even through college, it was just like, me and the friend girl things it was just not it i was like uh, i'm good like i don't need no new friend no new girlfriends women are conniving women are this women are that whatever and so as i got into crisis and i'm like losing friends again i'm like oh my god <laughs> so coming to me coming to accept the fact okay well if i'm going to be following after god it's just going to be lonely because not everybody wants to live a holy set apart life. Not everybody wants to live in this freedom that we get as his daughters. I mean, not everybody. And it's not because they don't want to. It's just because they're ignorant of it. They don't understand it. They don't know it. And some people know it and they just like, I know God, but whatever. That's their own business. That's between them and the Lord. But 
for me, it was like, dang, I'm losing friends all over again. Like, what's going to happen? So I accepted, okay, possibly I'm just going to have not many friends or I probably just have one or two friends. And then so maybe like a year or two ago, I started praying like for my friendships, like, God, please send me some God-fearing women. God, please send me some women, some friends that are after your heart and da 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 It didn't happen immediately. Because clearly there were some things that were in me that I needed to iron out, that I needed to be aware of so that I don't sabotage my new friendships. And there are still things that I'm aware of that I'm ironing out so that I do not sabotage my friendships. Like it was an immediate thing. Two of the things that I had to address within myself was envy and um, jealousy. I can say that. Another thing, comparison. Another thing, coveting things that other, my other friends would have. I mean, I, I can be honest. Those are some things that I had to address because I can't, t- couldn't take them into these new friendships because I don't want to ruin them. I don't want to destroy them, nor do I want to neglect them because of the inse- insecurities that are within myself. Come on. Who on here has been neglecting their friendships because of their own insecurities? Especially when we get into new friendships and we're like analyzing everything he or she does, trying to see what they really about. And then you start to look at yourself like, dang, am I really that good of a friend? Am I really this? Am I really doing that? Maybe I need to back off a little bit. Maybe I just need to go back to where I'm comfortable, right? Mm, that's not a good idea. But what is it? What is good for you to be aware of the things that you need to address within yourself? And just like God takes us through this um, season of isolation where we're single, like and I'm talking about like intimate relationship, like man and woman, woman and man, where you, you're you healing from a past breakup and you go through this season where you're healing and you got to get hold and you got to do all that stuff. That also transfers to your platonic relationships. Like you need to take your whole self, W-H-O-L-E, your whole self into friendships. Not yourself that is broken and, and missing pieces and don't even know where the pieces are to be fixed. Like you can't do that. <laughs> That's not beneficial to anyone. It's not beneficial to anyone. And so get your whole self together as you go into your friendships. But now I'm seeing that God is really connecting me with godly women, like women that I can literally have just meaningful conversation with, that I can get meaningful advice from and insight from. And they are women of God. They are women who are striving after God's own heart. They are women who are striving and reaching for the goals that they have set for themselves, going after the desires in their heart. They are women who are open to constructive criticism and they can give me the same thing and I'd be open to it. Like, come on now. Those are the friendships you want. Those are the friendships that last a lifetime. The friends that you don't want is the friends who y'all are just close because you're in proximity to each other or y'all are just close because you have the same likes. You know, that's that's surface friendship. You need some friendships that have some root in it with God at the foundation. Let, Let God be at the foundation of everything. We just did a devotion and sisters devoted to God call your circle matters and it went through the the different aspects there are in friendships it talked about your inner circle knowing where your friends are going um having reciprocity in your friendships like iron sharpens iron like y'all need to go and check that out on the bible app it's called your circle your circle matters yeah go and do that devotion it's very insightful and if you ever want to join sisters devoted to god all you need to do is um, go to thepurposeplace.com and become a member, or you can simply click the link in the description and join us on Geneva 
that way. But we do devotion every morning together. It is super insightful and it helps you create a good healthy habit of giving God the first fruit of your day. Like the first breath of your day be prayer or the first breath of your day be greeting your sisters in Christ. Then you're in prayer. Then you're reading devotion and getting in the word. That is a wonderful way to start the day. And I've cultivated plenty, many new friendships in that way as well. Getting up and doing devotion in the morning, starting Bible study group, um, and whatever else, you know, whatever else the Lord puts on my spirit to do. But it, it, it's just wild to see the transformation from where I was to where I was like, no new friends, no new friends, no, no, no. And now it's like, okay, I need this one. I need that one. I need one like this. I need one like that. I need one like this. You, you know what I'm saying? And it's all led by God, all led by the Holy Spirit. And I'm just grateful to be in the number. I'm just grateful to be in the number. Seriously. So I want to encourage you that if you're in the season where you're losing friends, you're transitioning from the world, going into God, and 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 people are just dropping off like flies, stay encouraged because God will bring the right people to you. When I tell you literally bring the right people to you, because these people have come to me. Like it's crazy. Or either I've found them through like happenstance or through a community that is connect intertwined with God is crazy, but he will add to you what's missing. He knows what you need. Stop focusing so much on what you want. God knows what you need. So maybe right now, if you're isolated or you feel like you don't have no friends, what, what you need is to be pruned. What you need to be is remolded. What you need is new infrastructure, and that's what he's doing. So just wait on it. And that goes to my single women, too. All my sisters like me who have been single for a, couple, for a couple years. Come on now. Just wait on it. Just wait on it. My good sis in our, um, in our app, she said, if that takes me being single for five plus years for me to get right, then let God's will be done, not my own. Come on. That's big to say. Like, y'all don't understand. Y'all be praying these big prayers like, God, take this out of me. When, when you say, let me say something. When you tell the Lord to have his way with you, come on now. You serious. <laughs> When you say, God, let your will be done and not mine, you're not playing. That is a big ask. That is a big commitment. That is a big request that God take everything that I think I want from my palette of desires and give me everything that you said I'm supposed to have. Mm. Come on. If you're praying that, I need you to believe that. I need you to let God have his way. I need you to let God have his way if that's your prayer. Come on. Come on now. Y'all, I'm on this 75 hard challenge. Let's talk about that too. Wait, before we talk about the 75 hard challenge, let me tell you this. And so talking about friendships and people falling off and then you find new friendships. You're going to be in spaces not even spaces, you're going to be in situations where you even have to say, hey, I can't go with you there because I don't agree with that now, or I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't do those things anymore, so I can't go. And the result of that may leave you feeling like, feeling guilty or shamed or, or like, just basically, let's leave it right there. Let's leave it right there. Feeling guilty and shamed because of how the other person may be feeling because they may feel like you rejected them. But really, you're honoring God. You're honoring yourself. So I want to encourage you to honor God, honor yourself, and just pray like, Lord, comfort them, Lord, and help me to be solid in my in my decision because you cannot compromise your faith. You can't compromise who you are to appease other people. So if you're after God, you're going to have to make some hard decisions some have some hard conversations when people invite you to go do some things that are ungodly like somebody recently asked me to go out to do to go to a show go to a bar and I'm like you know I love you but I ain't gonna be there 
That's not my scene. I don't do those things anymore. And just because you don't agree with a person's choices or their lifestyle, that doesn't mean you can't love them as a person. God's desire is that none of us should perish. So even the people who you see in your eyes to be the most wicked or whatever, however you want to put that, still you should still love them and love on them if you can, because it's not God's desire that any of his people, any of his creation, any of his sons, his daughters perish. He don't want none of us to go to hell, but unfortunately, a lot of us will. Unfortunately, most of us will. And that's what's, that's what's terrifying because you could be doing all of these things for God. Like, Lord, I did this. This is what the Bible say. Lord, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. I did this in your name. And he gonna say, get behind me. I don't know you. I don't know you. Because you got unforgiveness in your heart. Because you, because you lathering behind the doors in secret sin. Come on. Ha ha. Mm. Come on now. Come on now. A lot of us, Bible says a lot of us are not going to heaven. Terrifying, right? And I'm talking about me too. Like terrifying, right? Like that just because I'm sharing the message don't mean I'm excluded. The people that you listen to, the preachers, the prophets and all, just because they're sharing the message don't mean that they're excluded from the judgment seat. Like a lot of us ain't going to heaven. And that's just the truth. That's just the truth. But stay encouraged that if you're in that season where you are without friends that you just hold on because God is going to add to you what you need. Um, but I'm just blessed to be in the number. I'm blessed to be connected to you. Um, if you want to join us again at the Purpose Place, you can join, go to thepurposeplace.com, become a member, and then I'll send you an email and let you know how you can join the app. Or if you just want to directly join the app, you can just click the link in the description and join that way. We do have a um, three-day mindset challenge coming up on Ju July 16th through the 18th. Today is June 27th when I'm recording this. So if you are listening to this after July the 16th, 2023, the challenge is over, but I'm sure there are other things going on at the Purpose Place at this time. Just go to the website and see what's on the events list. Thanks for listening.